Okay, so uh, Kim Dae Gyo, what do you think? Your grandmother asks you where should she she wants to invest in the stock market. What are you going to advise her? Invest all your stock in Volkswagen because the price is low. Invest all your money. The price is low now after the disaster. If you go up 50% next year. Tesla. No? What advice? Tesla? Invest everything in Tesla. Great up and coming company. What advice are you going to tell your grandmother? She wants a safe investment for her money, but she wants to invest in the stock market. What's your advice to her? She's a pensioner, so she's not working, so she doesn't want to lose her money. She doesn't want to take a lot of risk. She wants to invest in the stock market and make a small return, maybe 8% a year. Where do you suggest to invest? Hmm? Yes, but she wants to invest in stocks. Well, that's great, right? First you're going to tell her, I don't know, I'm just a student. Talk to the stock broker. Well, that's the correct answer, right? Correct answer, talk to the stock broker. So a little bit of a trick question, right? But what if your grandmother has a gun? Puts the gun to your head? And she says, tell me which is the best stock to invest in. How should I invest in stocks? What are you going to answer? I, I don't know. You don't know? What you say? I'm going to shoot you. You better answer. What are you going to answer? I don't know, it's not good enough. Don't listen to him. For yourself. Hmm? Oh, invest all our money in the drug company? Which drug company? Drone. Drone. Drone company? Invest all your money in a drone company? Does everybody agree? No. No, what should she say to her grandmother? She has a gun to her head. Hmm? What should she invest in? Anybody? Invest separately. Diversify. How? What's the most diversified investment in the world? US market and emerging market. Invest in every stock in the world. Does she need to invest in every stock in the world to get the diversification benefit? No, so what can she invest in instead of investing in every company in the world? Then that's just investing in the NASDAQ in the US. That's one thing, right? We can invest in the stock index in one country, but that's only investing in one country. What if the US has a big crash? So what's better investment? That's the first step, right? Invest in the index. Okay, so after, after that, then what should we invest in? Global registered shares. Global what? So we talked about in the last time, iShares MSCI, right? This means that we can have the we can buy every stock in Korea. We don't need to buy every stock in Korea, but we buy the index. Right, the index is the main, the biggest stocks in Korea. What's the name of the index in Korea? Kospi, right? So we buy a fund. You understand a fund? What is a fund? What is a fund? What does fund mean? Fund just means combined money. Everybody puts their money together. I put my money with your money, and we add in her money and, and her money and his money. That's a fund, okay? Everybody puts their money together. So we invest in a fund. Now there are two different types of funds, right? We have an exchange traded fund or just normal fund. So if we find a normal fund, it will be 3% fee. Do you understand fee? Yes. You have to pay 2 This is called managed fund. So managed fund means that the fund manager is buying and selling the stocks all the time. Okay, it's not following the index. The fund manager chooses what they think is the best stocks. Okay? 
and then they buy and sell the stocks. Do you understand manage? Yes. They're, every day they're buying and selling stocks in the fund. Okay. Problem with this is transaction cost. So, do you understand transaction cost? Yes. Every time you buy and sell stocks, you have to pay money. Right? The fund manager has to pay money every time they buy and sell the stock. Transaction cost. Okay? So, because of this reason, do you know Warren Buffet? Yes. He's a very famous investor. Warren Buffet made a bet with the managers of these funds. He said, I'm going to invest in an ETF, right? The S&P 500, famous ETF in the US, 500 companies in the US. Do they change or stay the same? Companies, companies are staying the same, right? In the managed fund, are the, is our investment changing or staying the same? Changing. Changing, right? They choose, the managed fund, they choose, their, they think the best companies. Okay, here, does the fund manager choose the companies? No, how do we choose the companies? In this case, do you understand S&P 500? We talked about it in the last class, we looked at the list. Yes. So how, how do we choose the companies here? They're on this index or not? Okay, They're, are they included in the index or not? Okay, why are they included in the index? They have some ranking, right? Uh -huh. biggest, usually the biggest company is included on the index, okay? So we have 500 big companies on the index. Okay, do you understand? Yes. Then we have the fund manager who's choosing this company, choosing that company. Like you said, you want to invest in Tesla, right? So maybe Tesla is not on this list. So the fund manager choose Tesla. On this list is Disney. The fund manager doesn't like Disney. Throw away Disney. Do you understand? So Warren Buffet made a bet. He said, I bet that if we don't change, we just invest in the S&P 500, it will do better than you guys, who are buying and selling the stocks all the time. Who do you think won the bet? Warren Buffet. So where, where should you invest? In the managed fund or the exchange traded fund? Exchange traded fund. Why? Low fee, 0.5%, 0.75%. Another reason? Which one is more diversified? This one is more fairly diversified because this one has the bias. Do you understand bias? What does, how do you say bias in Korean? Bias. Kyonggyun? Bias of the manager. Okay? Is invested in this one. Okay, this one is no bias of the manager. Okay? Just invest in all of the stocks equally. Okay? So, Warren Buffet, they asked Warren Buffet, how are you going to invest after you die? You have your wife and your children. Okay? So, for example, your grandmother is like Warren Buffet's wife. She's quite old, right? I don't think Warren Buffet's wife is going to watch this video, so I can say that, right? Warren Buffet's wife is very old. Warren Buffet is very old. Maybe he's 70 or 75. Same age as your grandmother, right? So if I ask that question to Warren Buffet, what is Warren Buffet going to answer? Warren Buffet is in the class and I ask him, what are you going to tell your wife to invest the money after you die? <laughs> What's he going to answer? Hmm? He says, S&P 500, 90% of the money. And 10% of the money in short-term US bonds. Okay, why does he not invest all his money in the S&P 500? Because the cross the US stock. What's the only way? What's the only way you can lose money on the S&P 500? What's the only way you can lose money on this fund? The price goes down, you lose money. If the price goes down, did you lose your money? No, until you sell your stock, that's when you lose your money, okay? So, this is the S&P 500 for the last five years, right? Maximum since the 1980s. So this is the top 500 companies in the US. If I invested there in the 1980s, I would be much richer today. That's why Warren Buffet suggests to invest there over the long term, okay? So, we can see it was 
from close to zero to 2,500. Here we can see in 2000 it was at 1,500, okay? Now it's 2,500, so still a good return, right, since 2000. But where can I lose money? Let's say I invest here, and then, or I invest here, and it goes down to here. If I sell the product here, then I, if I have to, if I'm forced to sell, do you understand forced to sell? Yes. Then I'm going to lose my money. Okay, then again it goes up. Then again I buy here, and I have to sell here, then I lose my money. But according to Warren Buffet, if you can hold on to it for a long time, you're not going to lose your money. Do you understand? Yes. So his, that's why he has 10% in bonds. In case the price, when the price of the market goes down, instead of selling the stock to get the cash, we sell the bond to get the cash. Do you understand? Yes. Like reserve fund. Okay? Then we wait for the price to go up again. Then we can sell the stocks. Okay? Why the price is high. Yes? Why we buy saving the tank? Why we buy the short term bond? We Saving the money in the bank is the almost the same. Yes, almost the same. You could do, you could leave the money in the bank. Why does he buy the short-term bonds? Maybe the interest rate is higher than saving in the bank. If you have a lot of money, okay? That's a good point. He could just put 10%, could just be deposited in the bank, keep in cash, okay? So, uh, we have, Warren Buffet invests in the S&P 500. Now that's okay, because if we look at the global fund, we looked at in the last, class. Anyway, many of the companies in the global fund is from the US, right? Were are all of these companies only doing business in the US or are they doing business around the world? Around the world, right? Companies like Nike, how much of their revenues are they getting from other countries? We already studied earlier. How much was revenues of Nike was US and non-US? US. How much percent? 90% what? Non-US. Non-US, not that big, right? Maybe 40% US, 60% non-US, right? But the point is that Nike is a global company. But Nike is in the S&P 500, right? So in the US, we have many big global companies. So even though he's only investing in the S&P 500, he's still getting the advantage of global diversification, okay? But if we want, if you ask me, I don't think I'm smarter than Warren Buffet, but I'm going to say invest in the global fund, the MSCI global fund, okay? It has also stocks which is listed on other stock markets, not just in the US. But Warren Buffet lives in the US, it's easier for him maybe to just invest in the S&P 500, okay? So now what are you going to tell your grandmother if she puts it onto your head? Where should she invest her money? S&P. S&P 500. Can you find that on Dam Gumyeong? Ah. ETF? Yes, right it's on the Dam Gumyeong. Okay, so you, you prefer Dam Warren Buffet's Dam. idea, not my idea? Hmm? If you listen to me, you should invest in the global ETF. Do you understand global ETF? Yes. There aren't many examples in Korea, just one I think. And not, well, not largely traded, okay? But you can find a global ETF which is based on the MSCI we looked at in the last class. So if you give anybody investment advice, first thing you tell them, don't ask me, because later they're going to blame you, right, when their money goes down, right, ask the qualified stockbroker. But then if they really pressurize you and they ask you, well, what do you think? You could say, well, uh, the most diversified way to invest is to invest in the global ETF. It has low fee and it's very diversified. Okay? Does everybody understand that idea? Yes. Right? Do you want to invest in the S&P 500? Yes. Now? What looks like is going to happen next? Cross, cross the... Uh, down, down the... We're going to talk about it later. Maybe if the interest rate goes up in the US, it might go down. But maybe not. Uh, right? Maybe the US companies are very productive and doing very well. It might continue to go up. Right? Nobody knows. But if you invest and it goes down, don't worry. Right? It should. Come back up again. So the point is you have to invest for the long term. We talked about it before, right? So I suggested that you practice by investing Shipman 1 or Oman 1 or Man 1 in the S&P. Then it goes up 100%, you'll get another Man 1. <laughs> Very happy, right? In the future. 
but just it lets you to learn about the investing. So do you have any question about investing? No? So be careful of the fund manager, because if you invest in the fund, it's badly managed, bad fund manager, they have 3% fee, then you can lose a lot of money, right? Not diversified, but ETF seems to be a little bit more stable, okay? So what affects the stock market? What affects the stock return? Macroeconomic factors like inflation, interest rate, and so on. Exchange rates, industrial structure. But just like with exchange rates, we looked at the, the table of all the things which affect the exchange rate. It's quite similar for the stock market. Short-term speculators, right? Uh, following trends. Medium-term, fiscal policy. Okay, that kind of thing, monetary policy current account, long-term, productivity, okay, exchange rate. So a lot of things affect the stock market. So we can't find data which show, it's very hard to find data which shows the relationship between just one thing and the stock market. Because there's so many other things, right? So data doesn't support the notion that equity returns are strongly influenced by macroeconomic factors like monetary policy, okay, and so on. It may be that we start the QE. You understand the QE? Yes, yes. Actually, that hasn't, there's not much research on that because relatively recently, US has been doing the QE. But Japan has been doing QE for years and their stock market didn't go up, right? Japan started QE in the 90s and the stock market kept going down, okay? But the US was doing QE recently and the stock market went up. Japan was doing QE and the stock market went up, right? So if we print more money and supply more money into the economy, people have more money. So prices should go up of houses, of stocks, okay? But that's just one factor affecting the stock market. What if the companies are not good? They're not good companies, right? Maybe that's just as important. Then even though you do QE, stock price won't go up, okay? <coughs> the interest rate. So the U.S. is going to tighten their monetary policy, increase the interest rate sometime next year. What do you think? Is the U.S. stock market going to go down because of the interest rate? We can see that every time the central bank, Janet Yellen, says, maybe we're going to decrease the interest rate, stock market goes down, right? Because we should understand this relationship we talked about before. Increase the interest rate, what happens in the economy? If we increase the interest rate, what happens? Saving money. No? Saving money. People want to save money. Why? Why do people save more? Get more interest. Okay, so bonds looks a better investment now. Buying bonds looks a better investment, right? Any other reason? What, what else happens? People don't spend their money because they, they lend, they borrow their money. Okay, so people don't spend as much money because they have to pay back more interest oh, yes. on their loan. Okay, so most people have a mortgage. Do you understand mortgage? Yes. So maybe your parents have a mortgage and every month they pay back the interest. If the interest rate goes up, they're going to have less money at the end of the month. If the interest month rate goes down, they're going to have more money at the end of the month, right? So people have less money to spend. So because of this, we think the stock price will go down. So if we only look at interest rates, we think stock price will go down, right? So but when we do the research, we, find we can't find the relationship. Why? Maybe American companies is very productive these days. Do you understand productive? Yes. They have great new companies like Tesla or Google is doing a great job or Amazon is new product. Even though the US increased the interest rate, are people going to sell their stock? No. No, they're going to buy more stock, right? So it's just one factor that affects uh, the stock market. There's many factors which can affect the stock market, okay? So, <clears throat> we 
exchange rates. Uh, we have a correlation. For example, in Japan, Japan is very strongly correlated with the stock market with the exchange rate. Why? Japan has, is an exporting company. So if Japan does the QE, right? You understand QE? Yes. It's going to get the lot, the weak currency. Okay? It increases its currency supply against the other currencies. Japan's currency gets weaker. Is there advantage for that? Japan's economy generally or disadvantage? Advantage. Advantage. Why? It's an exporting country, right? Yes. So all the exporting companies, Sony, Toyota, okay, they get an advantage. Are more people going to invest in the stock market or less? More. More. So the stock price should go up, right? So if we look at the Japanese stock market, this this happened, right? Almost the same, the currency goes down 20%, the stock market goes up 20%, right? So we can look at uh, the, the Nikkei in Japan. <coughs> Nikkei 225, the top 225 uh, companies in Japan. So we can see that over the last few years, the Nikkei has been going up by 20-30%, right? At the same time, Japan's currency has been getting weaker by uh, if we look at the yen against the dollar in this time, we'll see almost the same movement, right? <coughs> so here is uh, the yen and the dollar from 2011 to 2015. It's almost the opposite relationship. Can you understand that reason? Yes. So what should you do if you invested in Jap Japanese stock markets in 2011? What should you do? Hedging or no hedging? You see Japan is doing a lot of QE, their currency is going to get weaker, and their stock market is going to go up. You want to invest in the Japanese stock market, are you going to hedge or not? Hands up who's not going to do any hedging. Hands up who's going to do hedging. Of course you do hedging, right? If you don't do hedging, the stock, the Japanese currency gets weaker. When you change it back to Korean won, you lose your advantage. I'm an American investor. I invest $100 in the Japanese stock market. It's, it's 1,000 yen, right? Let's say. Or 10,000 10, yen, right? Okay? Then the Japanese yen gets weaker. So it's going to be 15,000 yen is going to be equals to hundred dollars, right? Yes. This is now, this is three years later. Okay, so this is what happens. Okay, the yen uh, getting weaker, right? Yes. So, I invest in the stock market. The stock market goes up from 10,000 points to 15,000 points. Am I happy? Uh, yes. Yes, I made a profit of 50%, great on the stock market. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, then I change my money back. I still only get $100. <laughs> you said no hedging. Did you change your mind? Yes. You do hedging. Make the contract with the bank, right? You can lock in the exchange rate. You're going to get back. Then you get back. Then extra, right? Yes. So you're going to get 15,000 yen and you're going to get $150. You made $50. Great. Okay. But if it's a lot of money, it's more. So that's another. We said we mentioned already about the use of hedging in the stock market. Okay. So if we see this situation, the relationship between the exchange rate and the stock market, it's key key thing that we can have a relationship between the exchange rate and the stock market. Germany was the same. Germany also exporting com countries, so the euro got weaker, Germany's stock market went up. There was 6 billion euros invested in the German stock market between November and January last year. Why? Because the European Central Bank announced the QE, and the euro got weaker. So, instead of Sony, Toyota, we can put here Siemens, okay? BMW, stock price went up. Okay? People did hedging, hedging. 
to get the advantage. Otherwise, you don't get the advantage. Okay. Like one other European countries investor um, investor job German they are hedging the their country. No, no. If you have a euro, yes, you can still do hedging against the dollar. Yeah. So that's a good point. If I'm in Europe and I want to invest in the German stock market, right? I'd be happy I can get more euros, right? But I can get even more profit if I hedge against the dollars. I can get the stock market and the stock market goes up and I can also get, when I change my money back, the euro got weaker, I can change back into dollars, I can get another advantage, right? So it depends on your uh, risk aversion, right? If you want to take risk or not. So, uh, then industrial structure. Uh, so different countries have different industries, right? Should I invest in the co country which has a lot of technology industry? Or should I invest in the country which has a big agriculture or manufacturing industry? Again, it's inconclusive. There's no trend. Like if we invest in the country with this structure, high services, low manufacturing, I get a higher return than the other one. Okay. So do you have any questions about the equity market before we move on to the bond market? No? So, invest in the global fund, do hedging, right? If you invest in the S&P 500, you may also decide to do. Find a hedged fund, a fund which has hedging, so you don't lose on the currency risk. So, which is bigger, do you think? The world stock market or the world bond market? Bond market is bigger. Okay? More people invest in bonds than stocks. If you have a pension fund, do you think the pension fund prefers to invest in stocks or bonds? Why? What's the difference between stocks and bonds? Bond is the credit though. Bonds is like a loan, right? You have a loan. So stocks is buying a part of the company, right? So which is more risky? Stocks. Stocks. Why? Because the company value goes down. Okay, company value goes down. Bond is still the same. They have to pay back. Right? Here the company value goes down. Stock price goes down. Okay? Stock price can go down. Here the loan's loan has to be repaid. Okay? Now, of course, on the other side, you can get more advantage with stocks. Okay? Stock price goes up your company price goes up, you can get the advantage, okay? The company is doing very well, doesn't matter. They're just going to pay you back the loan and the interest, N nothing more, okay? So this stocks is riskier because of this, right? On bonds, the only risk we have is default risk. Do you understand default? Yes. What does default mean? They bankrupt. Or also called credit risk, okay? They don't pay back the loan, okay? They can't pay back the loan because they went out of business. Okay, Com countries also have this problem, can't pay back the loan. People have the problem, can't pay back the loan, right? So people can get credit rating. Okay, I always pay back my loan, my credit rating very high. I didn't pay back my loan, credit rating is low. But in this case, even if the company doesn't pay back, I'm still going to get something back because I can sell the land, I can sell the factory, I can sell the things, so I won't lose all my money. Stocks, I can lose all my money. Stock price can go down to zero, I get nothing back, right? I have to pay back the loans first. After I pay back the loans, if I have anything left, I might get something, okay? So, <coughs> bond is a safer investment. So the total market value of the world bond market is 50% larger than the world equity market. The US dollar, the euro, the pound sterling, the yen, they are the four currencies in which the majority of domestic and international bonds are denominated. So I'm a Korean company, I want to sell a bond, probably I'm going to have to sell a bond in dollars, okay, or yen or else it's going to be hard to find a buyer. Maybe nobody wants to buy my bond if it's in the green one, okay? Proportionally, 
more domestic bonds than international bonds are denominated in the dollar. So domestic bonds, even you're selling your bond just to Korean investors, Korean investors still asking for dollars, right? Domestic bonds, 44.2% uh, of domestic bonds are done in US dollars. Okay, uh, international bonds is more so done in euros. <coughs> so here we can see the uh, percentages. US dollar, 44% of domestic bonds, 36% of international bonds. Euro, 21% of domestic, 47% of international. And then much lower, pound, and then yen, and other, other currencies. So uh, here we can see also the currencies lined up. Here's the dollar. Domestic, international, it's the same information just on the graph. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so we're going to discuss about uh, the different types of bonds. Okay. So first one is uh, bearer bonds and registered bonds. Bearer bond doesn't have a registered owner. Okay. They offer. Do you understand anonymity? When you filled out the survey, I said, anonymous, don't write your name. Okay. Registered bonds, the owner's name is registered with the issuer. Okay. Uh, in the US, Yankee bonds, uh, which is a bond denominated in US dollars that is issued in the US by foreign banks and corporations. So you are a Korean bank or a Korean company, and you sell your bond in the US, right? then you have to, it has to be registered. Okay, you have to, <coughs> when you buy the bond, you need to register your name. So you, we saw Yankee before. Yankee is slang for the US. Okay? So a Yankee bond is, Korean company sells a bond in the US. That's a Yankee bond. Okay? So we talked about the stock market, similar to this, we must meet the requirements of the SEC. Do you understand SEC? Securities and Exchange Commission. They are the regulator in the US financial markets. Securities and Exchange Commission, okay? So, again, we need to make some reports and accounts. Will the SEC accept our accounts in the Korean language? No, they won't. Translate to English and translate to the American way. Okay, will they accept our report in the Korean way? No, we have to translate everything to the American way of reporting. Okay, then we can sell our bonds in the US. Okay, so many companies don't like this kind of regulation. Okay, and they prefer to raise US dollars in the euro bond market. <coughs> so a euro bond is an international bond that is denominated in a currency not native to the country where it's issued. So instead of selling in the US, we just sell change. We just sell U.S. dollar bonds, and the foreigners can buy them in Korea. Okay, so euro bond. It's a bond that is aimed at the international market for international people, and it's in the current different currency. So it's a confusing name, euro bond. It sounds like it's in euros, but it's not in euros. It could be in dollars or yen or pounds. Okay, just a currency which is not native uh, to our own uh, country. So we, uh, we talked about global equity, global uh, bearer shares, right? We also have global bonds. So the single borrower sells this bond in North America, Europe and Asia. So we can, the bond is sold the same in different continents, in different countries. So, example is uh, Deutsch. Do you know Deutsche Telekom? Yes. German telecom industry in Germany. Okay. So they they sold 14.6 billion, right? They sold three U.S. dollar tranches. Tranches means group group of bonds with five, ten, and thirty year maturities. Do you understand maturity? Are you mature? 
Are you mature? No? Mature means like older or wiser, right? But here, a maturity for a bond means the time. Okay? <coughs> five years. I'll pay you back in five years. Ten years. I'll pay you back in ten years. Thirty years. I'll pay you back in thirty years. Who would want to buy a thirty year bond? Who would want to lend the money to Deutsche Telekom for thirty years? They trust them, but who? Would, do you want to lend money to them and you get it back after 30 years? Large profit. Yes, you get a high interest rate. The interest rate on the 30 year would be higher on 5 or 10. But who? what kind of organization would do that? Pension funds. Pension funds, right? They've existed for 100 years. So they're, they know they're going to be here after 30 years. So they want to buy a 30 year bond. They, they, they can wait for 30 years to get the money, right? Then uh, they sold two, two euro parts with five and ten year maturities, totaling three billion. Two British pound sterling parts with uh, totaling 950 million. And one Japanese yen part. So mainly dollars, then euros, then pounds, and then yen. They sold the bond with different time limits, okay? Different amount. Do you want to buy a bond in Deutsche Telekom? Yes. Do you think that's a safe investment? Yes. Usually telecom industry is safe investment. Right? They own the infrastructure in the country. Okay? The telecom infrastructure. Probably they'll be making a profit after five or ten years. Right? So they, they can find investors from all over the world. And they sell their bonds in different currencies. So let's take a break then. For ten minutes.